So how did I get into raw foods? How, so how did I come into this 80-10-10 lifestyle? I came into it in 2001. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I had enough. I just had another bout of chronic fatigue. I had no like real fitness. I was up and down with fitness. I was like, wanted to be fit, couldn't be fit, couldn't, didn't have enough energy to train. You know, get a bit better, try and train, get like lung conditions, more asthma, Crohn's disease was just up and down. I was like, All right, enough is enough. And someone mentioned vegetarian diet to me. And I was like, vegetarian diet? Okay, <laughs> crazy, but I'll give it a go. I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired. Went vegetarian, felt better straight away. Cut out all, my, all animal uh, flesh foods, stewing eggs and dairy. And then a week later, I was like, hang on, eggs are periods from chickens and milk is for baby cows. I'm not doing that anymore, <laughs> ever. So I ditched them. And literally the next day I was like, wow, I can, I can breathe and my stomach feels even flatter when I wake up in the morning and wow, this is this is really good, this is really good. And then I just went on a, a Dr. McDougall style program. I was living on rice, literally living on rice and soy sauce, oatmeal and some soy milk in the morning with a bit of cinnamon, a bit of sugar on there. Potatoes with sauce and ketchup, things like that. And I just felt incredible. My acne went away, my Crohn's disease went away, my asthma went away, my chronic fatigue went away, my depression went away, things like that. Just see you later. And my performance, my fitness level, I can chart it, man. I can chart it. In 2001, I went vegan, and my fitness was like this. I went, a bit, went vegan, high carb, low fat. I just went like that. And it's just continually going like that. And at age 34 now, 10 years later, I'm the fittest of my life. Judging by my times in running from the mile to the marathon, set personal best all year in 2011. Cycling, fastest climbing ever. My biggest day on the bike is 515 kilometers. And when I was eating meat, biggest day on the bike was uh, 257 kilometers. So I've doubled my endurance, doubled my stamina, which is unheard of without drugs. Unheard of. <laughs> and my goal, next goal for cycling is to crack 600 kilometers in 24 hours solo. I've already done 620 kilometers in 24 hours in a, in a group of riders. I've done 1,243 kilometers, Paris, Brest, Paris, in 51 hours 30, no support, but in a group of riders. But I've never done solo just by myself. So we'll see, 600 Ks in a day coming up. Anyway, so how I got into raw food, so I did the McDougall program, worked great, fantastic. And then I picked up a book one day called Raw Life. Um, I was in a bookshop, I had a voucher, and I didn't know what to get, and I, I was like, well, raw foods, yeah, I mean, that's cool, I'm eating fruit for breakfast now, I've had fit for life, and eating fruit for breakfast, yeah, I feel good on that. So I pick up Paul Neeson's book, Raw Life, and I'm like, hang on, what's this dude saying? Rice is bad, beans are bad, 100% raw, wow, that's, wow, that's, that's interesting. So I read the book, got the book, and I like Paul's style, Paul's a pretty cool guy, give him a bit of crap on the internet, but he's a pretty chill guy. And so, reading the book, fantastic, did the raw food thing for a bit, felt like even better, because I started eating more fruit then. And, but uh, I wasn't eating enough fruit. Because in the book, Paul says, you know, you, you want a, a, you know, a breath air is a possibility. If man doesn't need f food. He quoted Hilton Hotem as man's highest consciousness. I think, wow, we don't need to eat. And I sort of believed that for a bit. Because I, I respected what Paul Neeson said for how he's an author. Maybe he knows what he's on about. And uh, when it comes to breath air, man, that, that, that ain't ever happening. <laughs> ever. That's like trying to... Uh, throw this MacBook all the way to Los Angeles. Just, I'm going to pick it up and I'm just going to throw it in LA, Santa Monica Beach. Boom, there it is. Never going to fucking happen, but people will tell you it can probably happen. So, got on the Raw Foods, read Paul Neeson's book. Good book, fun book, but it didn't give me any caloric sufficiency knowledge there. I didn't know how to get enough fuel because I was eating like five bananas for breakfast or five bananas for lunch at work. And everyone around me is going, you're eating five bananas for lunch, Harley? I think you've got a fucking problem. And I was like, oh, really? Like, is that too many, is that too many bananas? Oh, maybe. And so I was just failing. I was flailing. And then I'd go out training with the guys or racing and I'd be good for the first 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I'd just be like, oh. And they're like, wow, mate, raw food diet is working for you. Not. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'd just go back to McDougal program and I just, I just had fruit for lunch and fruit for breakfast and then you know, rice and potatoes for dinner. Did that for years and it worked fantastically. And then I was like, no, I want to do raw food because I had a glimpse of feeling I'll just a little bit better, you know, and I'm like, I want to go back there. And then I was like, okay, I'll, I'll eat raw food nut d desserts and stuff like that. So I was eating a lot of cashews and macadamias and almonds. And then I got Dave Wolf's book and he said, limit the fruit, man. Don't eat bananas and dates because they're hybrid. Just eat a uh, seeded watermelon and 
things like that, and avocados. So I was eating a lot of seeded watermelon, which is hard to get calories from, almost impossible to get calories from to be high energy. Eating avocados, and I was just like, oh my god, now I feel even worse because I'm, I've just got no, no stamina. And then I was like, hang on. And then Dave Wolf started selling cacao, and I'm like, oh cacao, I can eat that. And I was eating cacao, getting wired on cacao, and then crashing the next day because cacao is so toxic. It's full of theobromine, neurotoxin, classified biologically. Look it up, C cacao neurotoxin. And then I was just like, what's going on here? And then I, I remember when I read Paul Nissen's book, there's an article interview with Dr. Doug Graham. And I looked at this dude and thought, wow, that dude's really fit. And what he says makes sense. And so I was, but I started eating more fruit. And everyone told me I was eating too much fruit. And then I read Dave Wolf's book. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I started emailing Doug Graham. Because I still had that glimpse of feeling really well on, on the bananas. So I emailed Doug Graham and said, what's going on here? I felt good for a bit and then I crashed. And he's like, what are you eating? And I'm like, I'm eating this. And he goes, that's too much fat, not enough carbs, not enough calories. And I'm like, oh, like I don't count calories. I don't have a weight problem. He's going, you got an energy problem, man. You, ca you don't have enough stamina to go as hard as you want to go when you want to go hard. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. So he said, you need to eat X, Y, Z amount of carbs per day. And I'm like, man, I don't count calories. And he's like, great, you don't have to count calories, just don't expect good energy levels. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, whatever, mate. And I was a bit cocky with him back then, and I just sort of thought, yeah, whatever. And I just sort of, we just yo-yo, you know, fruit, rice, got the fat down. Still felt amazing, felt better than the high fat raw, obviously, everyone does. And but then I went to, and then I was still like, oh man, this Doug Graham dude is pissing me off because I know he's fucking right and I really need to learn how to put enough fuel in the tank. So I bought his book, Nutrition Athletic Performance, and I was like, yeah, awesome. And then I went to Health and Fitness Week in 2006. And I was like, holy shit, you guys eat a lot of fucking fruit. And Doug's like, we don't eat a lot of fruit, we eat enough fruit. And I was like, oh, enough, a lot. Oh, yeah, enough. You need enough. You need enough. You need enough sleep, you need enough water, you need enough fruit, you need enough carbohydrates. So then I just got into it. And I just went from there. Went from there. And I was still eating a bit of raw gourmet occasionally. And in hindsight, I would have been a thousand times better off going out to rice and beans and potatoes and then getting back on the fruit when it was available or when I could get it. Versus going fruit down to nuts. I could have gone fruit to potatoes to rice. Still high carb, low fat. But I was going fruit to nuts. Fruit to nuts. Driving myself nuts. Too much fat in the blood. Not enough glycogen. Performance is just like blah, 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 blah. I could have just gone fruit to potatoes and still had the glycogen going on, high carb, low fat, clean blood versus getting my blood all goopy and fat, fatted out from the excess nuts and oil. I didn't know about that. I was just like, raw, 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 Rory's law. And that's, I think Rory's 100% the best. But what's best is getting enough carbohydrate calories, be it bananas or potatoes. Hope that makes sense. Don't focus on 100% raw. Focus on 100% getting enough carbohydrate calories with fruit being the preference Potatoes being second preference versus going to nuts just to stay raw. Unhealthy, bad for your health. Potatoes are good, man. Don't fry them in oil. Don't add animal bits to them. Just have them steamed and baked with a little bit of condiment. Fantastic. And then in uh, so 2006, I was doing that, feeling better on the fruit. And in 2008, I went up another level. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to get even fucking more hardcore with this. I'm going to read sports nutrition journals. I'm going to talk to Tour de France team riders and doctors. How many grams of carbs are they eating a day? And I'm like, I'm going to eat like that. And I just increased my fruit intake from a lot <laughs> enough to extra. And boom, went up an another level. Just, so I'm just constantly climbing levels, getting new insights, powerful insights I can share with myself and other people. In the last 10 years as a vegan and into raw foods, I've experimented extensively. I've always kept it vegan except for maybe honey back in the day. But always vegan, no eggs, dairy, whatever. I'll leave those experiments to my friends, watch them go, whoa, that's fucking crazy. So what have I learned in those last 10 years? What can you learn from my experiences? <laughs> what can you learn in the next 60 seconds that took me 10 years to learn? How cool is that? You can learn in the next 60 seconds what took me 10 years to learn. This is what you're going to learn. This is what I've learned. Fruit is the ultimate. Sweet fruit, bananas, and dates. If you get enough calories from them, you can eat any fruit you want, watermelon, oranges, bananas, and dates, but you have to get enough calories from them. Like my friend Mike Arnstein, he can eat way more than me. I can't eat enough watermelon or oranges or papaya to get enough calories. I need bananas and dates to get my calories. So I've learned that, that you gotta get enough calories from your favorite fruits. Fruit is the best, it's the ultimate. Bananas and dates, killer, killer. Lightweight, high calorie, high carbohydrate, low fat plant foods. That's what I've learned. I've learned that 
you're better off going off raw foods onto potatoes, vegan carbohydrate dishes than going onto raw food desserts like heaps of cashews or macadamia nuts, high fat, carbohydrate deficient raw food vegan meals. You're better off on a high carb cooked vegan program than a low carb, carb insufficient, 100% raw vegan program. High carb is better, low carbs, fuck. I've learned it doesn't matter how well you eat, you need to go to bed early. You need to get early nights consistently. Because if you get late nights, you're gonna fuck up your health. Doesn't matter how good you eat. I've learned that you need to drink enough water every day so your urine is always clear and you're peeing at least a few times a night. That's what I've learned. I've learned that all the superfood stuff is absolute rubbish and now recently we've got the Adia Clarity recall. Recall? They're recalling it because it's toxic, poisonous. Uh, hello, we were saying that for fucking ages, man. Didn't listen to the crazy fruit bats, did you? And I've learned the only supplement worth taking, regardless of your dietary choices, is perhaps vitamin B12. It's the only supplement I take, it's the only supplement I recommend, regardless of what your diet is. I give B12 injections to my raw meat-eating friends who are eating raw eggs, raw meat. They still have a B12 issue. Give me injections, levels jacked up, problem solved. B12 is the only supplement I recommend or take. The rest of it's just... Second biggest problem is social disapproval. People say, you ain't like a monkey, <laughs> you ain't like a monkey, <laughs> there's a lot of fruit's gonna make you fat, or you don't get enough calories from fruit, like, you can kick my ass in the bike, but fruit's not healthy. All this stuff like that. So social disapproval, a lot of people can't deal with it. Personally, I don't give a fuck, man, I follow my heart, I follow health, I follow having fun. I don't give a fuck about the status quo, jealous fuckers, haters, drinking haterade, slipping on haterade, whatever. I don't really give a fuck about that anymore. I used to, 10 years ago. I've learned just to not take anything personally. Sometimes people change, they regret what they say to you, so don't take it personally, don't freak out. Eliminate excess drama from your life, have fun, be the example, be the change you want to see. Who we are, speak so loudly, no one can hear what we're saying. If, people, if Dave Wolf wants to sue you or what, don't take it personally, just keep doing what you're doing. Mean what you say, say what you mean. Those that mind do not matter, those that matter do not mind. And social disapproval, it's the two biggest hurdles. Situational inconvenience, can't get enough fruit. Second one, social disapproval. Just don't take it personally. So be organized. Don't take things personally. That's what I've learned my raw food journey. Hope that's of some help. This is a fucking video I would have paid fucking $10 million to have heard back in 2001 when I thought, okay, I want to get into raw food's lifestyle. What do I need to know? So that's what I've learned. This is like a 10 minute video, 15 minute video. It took me 10 years to work it out. <laughs> you lucky buggers. You're getting the secrets now for free. Cool. I'm just, I'm just giving stuff away, man. That's what life's about, man. Just giving and sharing, receiving and giving. It's one and the same. Give, receive. Just keep the flow happening. Don't hold on to anything. Don't block anything coming in. Just keep it flowing, man. Keep the flow happening. Give and receive. Pay it forward. See you on the road. Thanks for watching.